I've had the Seiko scroll saw in my shop for a couple weeks now. Let's take a look at it. What I have here is the Seiko ST21 scroll saw. It's a tilting head machine with a link drive system. And a few weeks ago, I was contacted by Ray Seymour, who's the owner of Seiko, which is the company that will be selling this machine. And he asked me if I'd like to do a product review. Uh, of course, I was more than happy to do that because uh, Ray's been a longtime supporter of the scroll saw community and has uh, been a well-respected and well-known um, seller of scroll saws. Uh, so I was more than happy to take a look at this machine. So about two weeks ago, uh, this machine arrived at the Atlanta Woodworking Show where I was a guest and uh, I was able to demonstrate this machine through the show, uh, but I hadn't used it before so I didn't have a whole lot of first-hand knowledge of it at that show. After the show, I brought it back to my shop, set it up, and now for the last two weeks I've been using this saw uh, pretty continuously every day. Uh, so I have a lot better feel for it, a lot better understanding of its features, and I just want to take a little time tonight to show you what you can expect from this machine. Now this machine is a pre-production model. This will go back to Seiko after I finish my review. Um, I will be getting a new one uh, when the production model comes out, which is sometime in the middle of May. Uh, so this will this saw will move into my number one spot in my little scroll saw corral here And I'll be using this as my primary machine for the next several months uh, So as time goes by and I learn more about this machine, I'll be giving you feedback But with that I'm going to get in here a little closer so you can see it better and give you some more details about the machine Here's a little better look at the ST21 uh, and the first thing you'll notice right off the bat is this nice large table. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, you'll notice something different here. It does have the digital angle gauge on it. Again, we'll go into that in a little more detail. And then it has all the standard features for a link drive style machine. But before we, want to, before we get started, I want to talk about a couple of the things that are not standard with this machine. And if you see them, you'll know. Uh, this light does not come with the machine. The uh, Seiko machine does not come with the light, so that's a secondary purchase. This uh, aluminum knob that I've got over the thumb screw right here for the blade tightening is not standard. And if you're interested in that, I can get you a link for where to pick one of those up. I also have a lighted magnifier on this machine. That's not standard. And something you can't see, and I'll show you in a little bit, is over on this side. I've got the uh, Seiko cyclone dust removal system hooked up to this machine which is a great device and we'll talk about that a little bit too and then eventually I'll do a completely different video showing that. Let's start out up front here on this machine and just look at a few more of the features. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the uh, DeWalt, the Delta, the Excalibur or even the Jet to some degree are familiar with the, the clamp style on this machine uh, it is a single lever to release the tension and a thumb screw to release, release the blade. Uh, so that will be familiar with the, to many of you that have used those other saws. It also comes with the dust blower. Now this one's a little bit different because you'll notice that the dust blower actually has a 90 degree bend on it. And that is so, and it's also a little bit longer than the standard dust blower. And that allows you to get the dust blower out in front of the blade with the air pushing the sawdust towards the back of the machine instead of into uh, your lap, uh, which is really handy. Let's see, what else can we talk about? Uh, for the most part, uh, I don't have the hold down installed on this machine. I always take them off, but uh, normally it will have a, the hold down attached right here around your blade, so it does come with that. And of course, you can see the Seiko branding over here on the side of the machine. On top of the machine here, we have the variable speed. Uh, I believe this variable speed is from 400 to 1750, so you've got a, a wide range of speeds there that you can work with. And right behind that is the on-off switch. Here's a unique feature of the Seiko scroll saw, and that's the digital angle gauge. Now the nice thing about this digital angle gauge is it has a nice little cubby for it to set in right here. So once you get it in there, it's, uh, it's in there nice and tight and it's not going to go anywhere on you. Uh, 
I've used uh, the angle gauge on other saws where I've just built a little platform for it to sit on, uh, but this is much more solid. It's not going to move on you. Now, if you're not familiar with it, what this does is this allows you to turn on the gauge, zero out your blade. So in other words, we'll use a square to make sure the first time we use it that we get the blade square to the table. Then we can hit this zero button, and then as we loosen the knob underneath the table to tilt the table, you can see that the angle gauge will show us the angle we're at. And then once we get done, we can take that back to zero just by bringing the angle gauge back up to square. Now you'll see that it takes it a few seconds, or not a few seconds, but maybe a half a second to a second to react. Uh, so when you move it, if you're trying to really, you know, zero in on a spot, let me get it loose again. You, you want to move it and give the gauge a second to react before you keep going. So if we were trying to sneak up on three, we'd have to give it a, just a little bit of a move and then wait for a second, and then there we are at three. And I'll show you here in a little bit, but underneath the table where the knob is that we're loosening to, to tilt the table, there are some positive stops uh, that you can set anywhere you want on the uh, on the base down there and let you come back to zero and you could probably hear that it, that thump meant we were back to zero. Now this thing is probably accurate to within a tenth of a degree which is pretty darn close so you'll see even though I came back to zero it's still showing point one uh, but you're going to be able to zero it in with no problem and we'll get underneath the machine in a little bit and talk about how you do that uh, but now let's move on to a couple other features. Let's talk about this table for a second because this is something that uh, has made me pretty much fall in love with this saw. And that's this nice big table surface to work on. Uh, this machine has a table surface of 16 and a quarter inches wide by 24 and a quarter inches deep. And in front of the blade, which is something that a lot of people have talked about on the Excalibur and the Jet Scroll saws, how small of an area you have in front of the blade to support your uh, workpiece. This machine has the largest capacity I've ever seen at 8 and 3 eighths inches. So when you've got your piece laying up here, you're very comfortable uh, even with the larger board holding it on this table. I really love that feature. Um, I had gotten kind of used to the Excalibur and the Jet. Uh, but once I came back and started using this machine, I realized how much I missed the fact that over here, like on the DeWalt Scroll saw, it had a fairly large uh, front of the blade uh, cut or table surface also, which I liked and I, I hadn't used it in so many years I kind of forgot, you know, how nice it is to have this surface. Another thing about this table that I was curious about when I first saw it, but I've actually determined that I really like, and that is that the top of this table is actually covered by a magnetic sheet that sets down on your scroll saw table. Now underneath it you can see we've got the aluminum table just like uh, most scroll saws do. Uh, but this uh, magnetic sheet cover that goes on the table, what I really like about it is it's very slick. Uh, so when you put a piece of wood on here and you start to move it, uh, it moves very freely. And if you've scrolled very much over the years, you know that's pretty important. And on other scroll saws, probably every month to two months, I would actually wax the, the uh, surface of the table just to keep it smooth. And in this case, you're not going to have to do that. This piece will be replaceable, and it's going to be a fairly inexpensive item. I think uh, last time I talked to Ray, he was looking at probably being under $20. Uh, it is durable. Uh, I've used this one for quite a while. It came in with a couple little nicks on it because it had been out in the field quite a bit being tested. Uh, but I haven't seen any damage to it uh, at all uh, since I've been using it. It does have a couple of graphics on it. Up here it's got the Seiko telephone number and website. And over here on the left it's got the uh, uh, micro drill bit numbers and their equivalent decimal sizes. Uh, kind of handy. Another thing that I actually didn't know what it was at first and I had to talk to Ray about it is it has this bullseye on it and the bullseye has lines that intersect at the center of the bullseye and what that's for is if you are a top feeder, I'm not, I generally am a bottom feeder, but what that means is if when you change to a different entry hole, if you loosen the bottom clamp and lift this up and leave the blade attached, now when you put your board on it, 
you can actually, by looking at these bullseye lines, you can get a very close approximation to where the blade is going to go down through the hole and as you move this down you, you can use these guys to help yourself line up. Now for me personally that's not very useful because I'm a bottom feeder but if you're a top feeder uh, especially on some larger projects you might find that handy. Another interesting feature of the table or an accessory to the table now these don't come standard with the scroll saw and I don't think there's a price out yet. I'm sure there will be by the time the machine is for sale. Uh, but a very interesting thing that I've never seen on any saw before and that is these little dust collection trays that you can actually mount on the sides and in the front of the machine to catch the dust as it comes off the table. Now if you're using a dust collection, you're obviously going to collect a lot of the dust, but you'll know that you're never going to get all the dust with dust collection on a scroll saw. Uh, so in this case, as you brush the dust off, rather than it going in the floor, it's going into these little dust trays that you can either pop off and empty or vacuum them out with your vacuum cleaner. Uh, so very interesting. Um, the one in the front bothers me just a little bit because I have a tendency to hit it every once in a while. It doesn't come off, but it moves a little bit and it always uh, makes me react to it. Uh, but the ones on the side seem very handy and I've gotten more used to this front one as I've used it. Uh, so I have been leaving it on there. I'm not a big proponent, proponent of dust collection on a scroll saw because I struggle with the noise. Uh, so having these guides right here to help, help keep that dust off the floor is pretty handy. Back here on the back of the machine, we'll take a look at the uh, motor for the scroll saw and the adjustment handle back here. And one thing that I really appreciated when I looked through the user's manual of the Seiko scroll saw, and that was that they actually explained how you use this adjustment knob. And if you'll notice right here on the motor, there are some cutouts around the screw so you can actually rotate this motor. And what these adjustments allow you to do is to change the forward to back movement of the blade to make it more or, or less aggressive in the cutting. Uh, other scroll saws have had this adjustment also, but uh, I had never seen it explained in any of the manuals, and uh, a lot of people never even knew what it for, was for. Uh, typically in the old days, this back here was your tension adjustment, and although it does to some degree uh, work on the tension, it actually enables you to set the parallel uh, adjustment from the upper and lower arms, which is what gives you that forward to back uh, movement in the scroll saw blade. Another feature back here on the back of the saw that just tells you that this machine had a lot of input from people who are actually scrollers, and that is this little dust tray back here in the back that does come standard with the machine. Um, as the dust is blown by the dust blower towards the back of the machine, it's captured in this little tray instead of just going off the back of the machine into the floor. Now, there are a lot of you out there that use these scroll saws in environments where uh, keeping the dust on the machine and not in the floor is very important. So little touches like this really add up. Uh, if you add dust collection to this machine, plus you use the optional rails and the included back tray, you really give yourself a great advantage to keeping that dust off the floor. We'll take a quick peek down here at the uh, stand for this scroll saw. And this is another great feature. Uh, some machines don't come with stands and I always recommend them if you can because they really do cut down on the vibration of the machine. Uh, makes it much more sturdy. Anytime you're building a stand, just always make sure one of the mistake I see a lot is people leave these uh, nuts and bolts a little bit loose. You want to get them good and tight and that will really cut down on the vibration. Um, I've laid a board here just to uh, be able to throw some accessories on, uh, but that's not part of the, uh, the kit obviously. Uh, the saw does come with a foot switch, which is another accessory that uh, I always recommend that if a saw doesn't come with this, you go out and buy it. So the fact that they've included it uh, is really great because it's a feature everybody should use. It just gives you a lot more control. Now this stand can be configured to tilt or set flat in several different positions. The front and back legs have adjustable from here down right above this uh, bolt right here to the floor there are four holes that where you can adjust the tilt. Most people will set the front lower than the back and that's so uh, as you set up over your project you're looking more down on the cut as opposed to looking at it from the side. 
Now, in my case, I've got both legs set to their maximum height because I sit on a tall chair, and the way I actually have the table tilted, which I've used before, and it, it just works for me, is I've got a little ledge around my workshop uh, right above the floor, and the back legs are actually setting up on that ledge, which gives me probably about a 10 to 15 degree angle, which is comfortable for me. Uh, but again, you can adjust this down where all four legs are at their lowest, and then you can set in a, you know, a regular armchair and saw. You can bring it all the way up and set it a stool. However you want to configure it, you've got the ability right there. This stand is very sturdy. Um, it's as good as any stand I've seen out there. Now, a couple things uh, that I will say is, uh, I did not assemble this machine, and when I packed it up and brought it back from Atlanta, I didn't disassemble the, uh, the stand, so I don't have a video of the unpacking and actually showing the stand put together like I've done on some other machines. Uh, but eventually when I get my new machine, I'll do a video showing how this stand goes together. Uh, because they're, it's kind of funny, it always looks simple and it always ends up being a little more complicated than you expect. So uh, I know for some people, uh, me showing them building the stand the first time has been helpful. So we'll do that again uh, as soon as we get a chance. Over here on the side of the machine, I've got the uh, Seiko Cyclonic Dust Extractor installed on this machine. And on the back of the machine is a small Metro vacuum cleaner. Uh, now, if you know anything about the Metro Vacs, they are very high quality and very powerful machines, and this one is also. Uh, unfortunately, because of that, uh, the noise might be a little higher than you want to deal with, but as dust collectors go, uh, as, especially for small vacuum cleaners, it's as quiet as any, uh, or any reasonably priced vacuum. There's some very high-end vacuums that are quieter. Uh, but you get used to it after a while uh, and for some people you just don't have an option because you need that dust collection. Now a cyclone is a system where the dust is extracted from the soil, it goes through this holes, goes into this cyclone which spins the dust around and heavier particles fall down into this jug down here and then the fine dust goes on back to the vacuum cleaner. Well in this case it does that but it also catches about 90 percent of the dust in this uh, canister down here that you can just take off and empty as opposed to filling up the small vacuum uh, bag that's inside the uh, Metro uh, vacuum cleaner which helps uh, you know cut down on replacing the bags all you have to do is take this jar off and empty it. This is a very easy assembly because the head for the dust extractor is a magnetic mount. So you just put the head on here you go underneath the table and you snap it right where you need it to be. And from my experience over the last few days of using the dust extractor, it's very good underneath the table. Uh, now, of course, it doesn't do anything for above the table, but for the most part, you can work it around that because of your dust trays if you buy those. Or when you get done with your cutting, you can just reach down here and do this, and you've got a vacuum ready at hand uh, to vacuum off the top of your table. So very nice dust collector. And again, I'll do a full video review on that later. Okay, sorry for the little bit of shaky video here, but I'm gonna go handheld underneath the saw right now and uh, show you the uh, underside of the table. And first thing I wanna show you is right here is that magnetic mount. Uh, so when you get ready to put it, you just wanna direct this at towards the hole in the bottom of the table in the blade. And I've found that even being an inch away, like this is right here, it's still very efficient. Uh, of course, I would think the closer you get it, the better. Uh, but if you're just reaching under the table and putting it on there, you're still going to get very good results. You can see that the bottom of the table also has the thumb screw for the bottom blade clamp. This is our knob that we use to release the, uh, um, the upper and lower arm so we can tilt it. And if you look right here and over on this side, these are the positive stops that we can use to set at any angle. Now, I want to show you real quick here. This is a little bit different. And at first, I didn't like this, but the more I used it, the more comfortable I am with it. When you loosen this and you go to move the tilt of your, ta of your head, you'll see that some, some of the uh, other machines on the market, they actually use a rack and pinion gear. And you actually turn this knob and it makes the, the tilt uh, move for you. In this case, it's a free floating head. 
Uh, and I thought for a while I was going to have trouble getting it where I wanted, but a couple things have changed my mind. Uh, one is it's a lot easier than I thought it would be, and the other is these positive stops, which I got a little later on, I didn't have these at first, are really helpful. So when I get this loose, getting it back to zero is just as simple as doing that. Now, it just takes a four millimeter Allen wrench to loosen these and move them wherever I want them. So like say if I'm gonna do dovetails on a scroll saw, I can come over here and set this stop at seven degrees and this at 90, and I can move back and forth just simply by you know moving it over to that stop and then back to this stop. Uh, so it actually has worked out to be uh, a much nicer system uh, than what I originally thought it was going to be. I'm actually pretty pleased with it. And I just keep a little Allen wrench down here. And uh, for the most part, um, I leave this one at uh, zero degrees, 90 degrees, whatever you want to call it, and just always tilt the table this direction. Uh, now, of course, these are easy enough to move that if you need to get them out of the way or even remove them completely, that's not a problem. I'm going to stay handheld here just for a minute. I'm going to turn my digital angle gauge on. And I've used my little square here to square up the blade and I've reset that to zero to make sure we have a starting point of zero. Now I'm going to go back down underneath the table again and I'm going to loosen my knob all the way and I'm going to tilt this all the way as far to the right as it can go. We'll come above the table and you can see in that direction we have a 32.7 degree maximum angle. And we will come down and do the same thing in the other direction. And we'll go back up and you'll see that we actually have a 35.9 degree tilt. So this machine does not go to a full 45 degree tilt. I had some comments that people thought that might be a problem. Uh, honestly, I don't agree with that. And uh, I'll go off the handheld camera here, go back to the, uh, the mounted camera and we'll talk about that for a second. Okay, let's take just a second to talk about the limitations of the uh, maximum angle that you can cut on this scroll saw. Let's just break it down into real world. Um, probably the most common type of cut that you'll make with the head tilted one direction or the other is either a relief cut or a inlay cut. Now both of those are almost always going to be cut at less than 10 degrees. Uh, so this will be more than sufficient to cut those patterns. Uh, you also have the fact that 99% of what most people cut, now I'm not saying this is true of everyone, but of what most people cut, they're going to cut with the blade at 90 degrees. And to be honest with you, the uh, tilt of the scroll saw is, is never even an option for many, many people. They just don't cut that type of project. Now you get into the area of the specialty type cuts. And there are some of these. You know, you can talk about uh, cutting dovetails, which I've done a video in the past. This machine will do that fine. You, you can get it at the angle you need there with no problem. Uh, probably the number one area in the people that will possibly have trouble with this machine are people that use their scroll saw to make wooden bowls. Now this is a book by Carol Rothman about making these wooden bowls and you do basically all angle cuts when you're making these bowls. So just out of curiosity I went and got this book. I've had it for a long time and it's a great book by the way. Uh, if you're interested in making these wooden bowls uh, check it out because Carol really did a wonderful job. Uh, I think there's actually another book out also but both of them are great. In this book there's a little chart on page, I don't know what page is it, page 13, that shows the different angles that you'll use to make these bowls based on the wood thickness and the width of the ring. Uh, so the thickness will be how thick the board is that you're going to use, and the width of the ring will be just that. It's the width around the circumference of the ring at each point. Uh, that's what you'll get. Now, most of the bowls I've ever made are uh, have a ring width of one quarter inch. She does have the cutting angles in here for a half inch wide board and a half inch ring width. She has it for a half inch wide board and a three eighths inch ring width, a uh, half inch and one quarter, three quarter inch and one half, three quarter inch and one eighth, and three quarter inch and one quarter. Now, when I've always made bowls, I've always just used the three quarter inch 
uh, uh, thick board with a one quarter inch thick ring because that's what I think looks the best. And what you need to make that happen with these concentric ring is to be able to adjust your table to 20 degrees. So there you've got a bowl that you can make with no problem. Three quarter inch with a three eighths inch ring, which would be a little thicker uh, wall on your bowl, you have to go to 28 degrees. And you'll notice that we are able to do that on this saw. Three quarter inch with a half inch ring, which I find uh, a little clunky personally, uh, but some people may like that, you have to go to uh, 34 degrees. So again, we're within that range of being able to tilt this table to that angle. Uh, above there we have one half inch thick wood with one quarter inch thick rings, which would be another common bowl that I would make. You have to go to 28 degrees, so we're well within that spec. Up from there we run into problems. Now we're talking about a half inch thick board with a 3 8 inch ring and you have to go to 38 degrees. We can't quite make that here. Also a half inch thick wood with a half inch thick ring you have to go to 45 degrees. So you have to make a pretty sharp angle cut for that. Uh, but as you can tell one, two, three, four out of the six of these uh, desired thicknesses of your wood and the ring width uh, we can cut. So if you want to make bowls they're still within the range of this machine you just have to be a little bit more picky about the thickness of the wall of your bowl how thick it's going to be and again most of the time I think most people like to you know get the thickness down at least to uh, three-eighths of an inch if not one quarter. Personally I think they look better but that's up to whoever's doing the cutting. Uh, so that's what I think about the uh, restrictions in the amount that this machine can be adjusted. I personally just don't think it's a big deal. I think this is more than sufficient for 99% of all the scroll solders out there. Uh, if you're in that 1% or 5% or whatever it is of people who actually de do need a roll saw to cut at 45 degrees, then this is not the machine for you. That's enough about features. Let's talk for a minute about the most important thing about a scroll saw, and that is how well does it cut. Now, I don't think it'll come as any surprise to you that being a high-end scroll saw, this machine is going to cut very nice, and it does. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. One is the vibration is very minimal. Uh, I compared the vibration using uh, my iPhone app that I've used in other videos that actually shows uh, the vibrations coming from the machines. I compared it against the DeWalt, the Jet, and the Excalibur, and this rated right there with them, if not maybe just a little bit better. Uh, so there's very low vibration, and again, that's um, just because of the proven uh, 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 link drive system. We know it's had very low vibration on all these machines for years. Uh, it gives a very nice uh, cut and this machine having the ability to do the adjustment for the uh, front to back movement of the blade allows you to zero that cut in to exactly what you want. Let me zoom in here real close and show you something about that front to back movement. I've zoomed in here real close. This is the blade. I'm going to turn the machine on and I'm going to slowly bring this uh, piece of wood up to the back of the blade. And when the scroll saw blade goes up and down, because it moves in a little bit of an arc, uh, it has a tendency to move frontwards to backwards just a little bit. Now some machines like the DeWalt DW788 scroll saw, this front to back movement can be uh, fairly pronounced and it is considered a very aggressive cutting machine. Uh, the Excalibur scroll saw came along and gave us the ability to adjust that a little bit and so we could get it down to uh, where there was very little front to back movement and made it a much less aggressive cutting machine which allowed you to cut very intricate fretwork and make very tight turns. Now this machine fits right in with the Excalibur and other machines. If I bring this piece of wood up to the back of this blade you can see that there's very very little front to back movement uh, if you do this on the DeWalt, or at least most DeWalts, they're all a little bit different just because of quality control. This board will actually sit here, and I'm exaggerating this, but it'll sit here and bounce back and forth. Uh, and you can see this one, I've got it zeroed in where there's almost no front to back movement in this blade, which makes this machine a very precise cutting machine. You can make very, very sharp turns, uh, cut very intricate fretwork, 
and not have to worry about this blade causing you trouble. Uh, so this machine is sweet. This won't show you a whole lot, but we'll go ahead and make a couple of cuts with it just so you can see the action of the machine. And again, you can see I made a very tight turn there with no problem. Right out. Very nice cutting machine, uh, on par with any I've ever used. Let's just talk a little bit about what I think about this machine. And I don't think you have to think very long uh, to have seen that I really like this machine. It is top rate from top to bottom. Uh, the mechanics of the machine are sound. The stand is wonderful. Uh, I love the nice large table. It has all the features you would want in a scroll saw. And best of all, it cuts like a dream. Uh, now. The details on this machine are, let me look over here, this machine is going to retail at Seiko.com, that's S-E-Y-C-O.com. It's going to retail for $929, so it is a high-end machine, uh, but like most things, you know, to buy quality you have to spend a little more money. Uh, it will go on sale the middle of May, they don't have an exact date yet, but they're getting very, very close. Uh, they are taking uh, reservations for the machine right now. You won't pay for the machine up front, but you can set a reservation for when the first order comes in to get yours uh, sent out. Um, the price, in my opinion, is in line with the other machines uh, that are on the market in this quality range. Uh, I like this machine better than the Jet uh, for a few reasons that I won't go into. Uh, I like it as well, maybe a little better. No, I take it back. I like it better than the Excalibur because I really love this nice large table uh, and a couple other features that I think are really good. Uh, so I, I would even put it above the Excalibur. So both of those machines are basically in the same category as this machine, and I think this machine outperforms both of those. Uh, let's see, what else? The uh, added dust collection is a nice system. Um, one of the best I've seen, and again, I'll be doing a full review on that later. Uh, it sells as an addition for, I believe it's $159 on Seiko's site. Don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure that's about what it is. And uh, it works wonderfully. Um, so we'll do a review on that a little later. But in general, if you're looking for a machine that's going to last you for years, it's going to give you the ability to make very precise and accurate cuts, uh, basically just going to be a joy to use, then you are not going to go wrong with the Seiko. It's, it's a wonderful machine. Um, again, I'm not, this is not a paid advertisement or a paid review, but I will be receiving one of these saws for free from Seiko. Uh, so if you want to consider that bias in there, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but if you watch my channel uh, for any length of time, I think you'll know that I don't have any problem uh, letting you know when I think something's good or when I think it's not not good. So in this case, uh, trust me, this is a fine machine. And uh, if you get an opportunity to uh, uh, see one at one of the upcoming shows, I know he's going to take it to the Midwest Scroll Saw and Woodworking Trade Show. Uh, that is in August. He's also going to have it at the Artistry and Wood Show in Ohio in October of this year. Uh, so if you can wait that long and you want to see it in person, um, obviously you're more than welcome to come take a look at it. Right now I plan to be at both of those shows and I'd be happy to show you what I know about it and of course Ray the owner will be there and, and he has complete knowledge. Last but certainly not least is purchasing from Seiko. Ray has been in this business for years. He's been a respected and loyal seller in this community for all of those years. I have absolutely complete trust in buying from Ray. Uh, I've gotten my last two scroll saws from him. I probably could have gotten, got in, gotten them cheaper other places, uh, but I didn't. Now, let me back up on the Jet. I didn't pay full price for it, So, uh, but the Excalibur I paid full price for from Ray and never regretted it for a minute. He has top level customer service. He knows how to take care of problems. If you have a problem, he will fix it for you. Uh, just a, a 
wonderful company to do business with. So that makes it very easy for me to sit here and do a review of this machine and feel totally comfortable that you'll be happy with your experience dealing with Seiko. So I think we'll stop at that. I think I've covered just about everything I want to cover. I'm more than happy to answer questions. Just email me. Uh, I'll put the email, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put the, uh, the URL to my blog in the uh, description below. I'll put the URL for Seiko where you can buy this machine in the description below. If you want to email me, just go to my blog and you'll see a little email me icon in the top left hand corner and I'm more than happy to take questions there. So with that, I'm Steve Good. I hope this review was helpful for you and we'll see you next time here at the Scroll Saw Workshop. Let me take just a minute here to tell you how much I appreciate you guys and thanks for watching this video. I would like to ask for a favor if you wouldn't mind. Uh, the little thumbs up arrow down at the bottom of the screen would be great if you'd click that for me. Also, while you're down there, hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any of my videos. Thanks again and we'll see you at the Scroll Saw Workshop.